Okay, so now that we established that uh, vitamin D is probably helpful in acne, let's look at how much you actually need that stuff. And um, in 2006 there was a paper published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition and the paper had a title Estimation of Optimal, optimal Serum, that is blood, Concentration of uh, Vitamin D for Multiple Health Outcomes. And uh, in that paper they, they stated that uh, for most health conditions the benefits really start from um, 75 nanomoles per liter in blood and the optimal levels are from 90 to 100 nanomoles per liter. Now, I should say that there's quite a bit of controversy in the scientific community about vitamin D and how much we need it. And most health authorities are actually, they are more conservative in their recommendations. And the uh, National Institute of Health, for example, recommends, or they say that 50 nanom nanomoles per liter is enough for the vast majority of the population for all health outcomes. Now, why do you go with the, 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 the conservative recommendations by health authorities or... Now that said, there doesn't seem to be any, any risk in going about the National Institute of Health recommendations. Because the the levels, blood levels at which vitamin D becomes toxic, they are actually pretty high. And uh, they measured the blood levels of vitamin D in uh, healthy outdoor workers, and they, they're getting readings between 110 to 175 nanomoles per liter. So, and this is from sun exposure, what the body itself produces and the body doesn't produce so much vitamin D that it becomes toxic because there's a feedback loop that once you have enough vitamin D then the body doesn't produce vitamin D from sun exposure anymore. So there doesn't seem to be a, any good reason to believe that levels of 150, 175 nanomoles per liter are, are toxic because the body does produce these levels on its own from sun exposure alone. So okay, so what does it what does this mean in practice? Because knowing these blood uh, blood levels of vitamin D is maybe interesting, but it's not very practical. It doesn't tell you how much you should take, what food you you should eat, and how much you should eat them. So if you go back to that same 2006 review that we that I talked about earlier, they state that uh, the optimal daily intake is from 700 to 2,000 international units per day, and that. At that intake, most people should get to those optimal optimal blood levels of vitamin D. <clears throat> and there's a quite a wide range in these recommendations because to get you to that level depends on, on many factors. One, for example, on your baseline and your starting vitamin D levels and then your skin color, like because skin color affects how much vitamin D you produce from sunlight and time of the year, where do you live? in the globe and so forth and so forth so that's why there's quite a bit of uh, quite a large range in the recommendations so going from 700 to 2000 international units per day seems to be the optimal daily intake now where to get this vitamin D then and uh, in contrast to many other vitamins and nutrients diet is actually not not a very good source of uh, of vitamin D because they are only a handful of foods that contain any reasonable amounts of vitamin D and if I look at from my cheat sheet here I can I can give you some foods that are high in vitamin D and tell you how much they have like cock liver oil is the food with the most vitamin D and one tablespoon gives you about 1316 international units of vitamin D but one tablespoon per day is is perhaps too much because it will actually give you too much vitamin A and over the long term you may run into vitamin A toxicity and salmon is another not a good food with uh, another food high in vitamin D and a three ounce serving will give you about 800 international units oysters will give a three ounce serving will give you about 270 so as you can see those are, the, those are sort of the best foods in terms of vitamin D content and uh, 
as you can imagine, it's not very easy to get to the levels of 700 to 2000 per day from diet alone. So if you might get say about 400 to 500 international units per day, that is if you pay attention and actually go out and see foods that are high in vitamin D. If you don't, then your intakes are probably going to be less. Now sunlight is another source of vitamin D and it's actually much better. You'll get much more vitamin D from sunlight than from diet. For example, exposure in bathing suit in sunlight for the time that it takes for your skin to turn just slightly pink, that will produce enough vitamin D that it will raise your blood levels of vitamin D the same amount as taking 10,000 to 20,000 international units uh, of supplemental vitamin D. So sunlight will give you much much more than diet. And uh, most health authorities actually say that uh, exposure of face, arms and legs about 15 minutes a day, 3-4 times a week is enough to meet your vitamin D requirements. Now these recommendations might refer to the somewhat conservative, uh, conservative uh, vitamin D requirement levels by most health authorities. So you might go a bit more than that, maybe 15 minutes every day, but definitely not so much that you'll burn your skin. And uh, when it comes to vitamin D, you have to remember that uh, where you are, where you live, affects the affects your skin's ability to produce uh, vitamin D from sunlight because whether or not your skin can produce vitamin D from sunlight depends on the angle that the sunlight hits the earth and uh, if you look at San Francisco as a reference point in San Francisco at that level like that northern latitude at that level from mid-October to mid-March the angle is such that your skin doesn't produce any vitamin D from uh, sunlight. So, and obviously the, the northern up you go, the longer this vitamin D period is. And it's of course mirrored in the southern southern hemisphere that 37 degrees southern and then below from there. So you have to remember that uh, in winter months you're not going to produce any vitamin D from uh, sunlight. So you should definitely consider a supplement for, for those times and if you don't spend much time outdoors in sunlight. So that's it for this video. Let's quickly conclude what we taught here and uh, see if we draw some uh, important points out. So for people who are insulin resistant, vitamin D is probably going to be helpful and you should especially make sure that you get enough uh, vitamin D per day, be it from diet, supplement or sunlight or from all of those. And uh, yeah, people with insulin resistance and problems with uh, blood sugar metabolism. For example, if your blood sugars go high, <clears throat> go a bit too high after a meal, or if your fasting blood sugars are a bit too high. So yeah, try vitamin D. It's probably going to be helpful for you. And the rest, yeah, if you don't have insulin resistance, yeah, that's up to you. Taking vitamin D is probably not going to do any good for your blood sugar metabolism. But vitamin D probably has other health benefits. Something we haven't talked in this video because it's, it's specific to acne. But there's a lot of research showing that it, it probably has a lot of other health benefits also. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. My name is Seth Pupusa for AcneEinstein.com and be sure to check my website for more and good information about acne. Thanks. Bye bye.